Alrighty, so this week, apparently, the schedule maker decided to go a little bit crazy in terms of all these games that's going to be happening in match week number seven, because not only that there's going to be all but one game that's going to be happening on Saturday, but they decided that they're going to have seven games that is going to be happening at the same time between 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific, and then add another five that's going to be happening at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Pacific. So if you do the math, there's going to be at one point uh, this match week where there's going to be 12 games that's going to be happening at the same time. And you know what that means? That means I'm going to ground help. But anyway, let us begin. First, talk about the first of seven games that's going to be happening at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific. And that includes some of these games that is actually going to be happening in the West Coast that are early games. But we start off with the first one, which is FC Cincinnati versus the New York Red Bulls. So obviously this is a rematch of one of the playoff series that we had in the first round last year. Now for Cincinnati, they are currently at the top of the Eastern Conference. And despite the fact that they haven't played very well and they've been kind of grinding out reserve, they're still at the top of the, the Eastern Conference with 3 free and all record. While the Red Bulls are too shabby themselves. 3 2 and 1 is their record. Um, and in terms of all time meeting um this is uh, i think it's six five and five in favor of the red bulls uh, i'm pretty sure that's not all five and five i'm pretty sure the red bulls have ne never beaten uh cincinnati because as we'll t look at the last five head-to-head -head matchup it pretty much shows that the red bulls at least won one of them but uh this obviously includes the playoffs of course this includes the two games that we had in the free game series where in game number two uh it was a 1-1 drop between Cincinnati and the Red Bulls but Cincinnati won in the PK show to move on uh into the next round but in game one Cincinnati convincingly won the thing against the Red Bulls but then the Red Bulls won 2-1 on the road against Cincinnati uh though Cincinnati returned the favor by winning 2-1 on the road and then Cincinnati won 2-1 on the road and I believe that is the the playoff series that that we saw back in 2022 so yeah both of these teams they have met each other in the playoffs the last couple of season uh there could be a case where we could have three seasons in a row where both of these teams meet each other on the playoffs although that's early to say but yeah it should be kind of an interesting matchup especially with uh the way that you know the red bulls have definitely been, been different than what we've seen in previous season this is a very dangerous red bulls team especially on, on on the attack and they're facing against a Cincinnati team that is very stingy in terms of defensive play but you know going for on the attack they're still trying trying to figure things out as the season goes along now moving on we got Columbus versus DC United so Columbus 3-2 and 1 while DC is 2-3 and 1 and I would say this is a pretty underrated matchup I mean I know I know not many people would 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 say a Columbus versus DC matchup it is an exciting matchup, but you know, these are two teams that have definitely done well this season. Well, you know, we kind of feel like the defending champion was going to do well, but I don't think people thought that Troy Lissay DC United team would actually uh, play very well and get, all, get off to a decent start to the season. Now, in terms of all time meeting, because both of these teams are two teams that are part of the original 10 teams that came in the league in 96, that means there's a lot of all time meeting. 38. 13 and 36 in favor of DC. Uh, last five head to head matchup was Columbus winning 2 0 on the road against DC before Columbus winning 2 0 against DC United. Then it was a 2 2 draw between both of these teams. Then Columbus win 3 0 against DC before Columbus also winning 3 1 on the road against DC United. So Columbus has definitely uh, got the better of DC at least in the past couple of head head to head meeting. But it's also going to be interesting to see whether or not if Cucho Hernandez is going to be playing in this game. As we've seen that in the last couple of games, he's been pretty much benched because uh, of... Um, well, this is not official, but we kind of knew, knew what this is, which is kind of him him uh, violating some team policy. And we'll see whether or not if Will Fernandez will say that he's ready to play uh, in this uh, this game. Because, yeah, there's no doubt that I think Columbus will really want to have Cucho Hernandez not only in this game... But maybe in, in the, the return leg as well when they have to go down to Mexico and have to, to go down to Alvocon to, to get a, get not only a resort, but a win to move on into the semifinal of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Speaking of a team that's also going to be have to go down to Mexico to get a resort in the CONCACAF Champions Cup, that's kind of the same thing for Inter Miami. But unfortunately, their, their task is a little bit bigger because, you know, they're 2-1 they're down in the aggregate score and not only they have to win uh down in in monterey but have to win by 
multiple goal. Now, before that, they play against the Colorado Rapids. So Miami, 3-2-2, two, and two, while Colorado is 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. And believe it or not, this is actually the first ever meeting between both all of these teams. Now, obviously, it'll be interesting to see whether or not if Inter-Miami maybe give Messi one more game game to rest before he's probably going to be be back in in this team in the next game i've heard that it seems like he's, he's now back training and it seems like he is about about uh to be be healthy enough to be back into the team and maybe even back in the star 11 to me i wouldn't risk him in this game especially with the way that i, I know know that they're facing against a rapids team that you know don't don't discount this rapid team this rapid team is a re really decent, decent team uh, and have got off to a good start under Chris Armas, but you know they know that they they have other priorities to focus, and you know they they need everything thing in terms of that second leg against Riados in the Concacaf Champions Cup. So we'll see whether or not if they do decide to put Messi in this game, and if they are gonna put him in, I think they probably maybe put put him coming off the bench, even though you know you would expect him maybe to get get. Some starting minutes, consider, you know, when he's healthy, he's always in the starting 11. But I think they, they'll probably have him come off the bench and maybe build some match fitness so that he's going to be re ready for that second leg game against Riados down in Mexico. Then we move on in the next one, which is New England versus Charlotte. So, yeah, the Revs, they're all one and 4 It's been a miserable start to the season facing against a Charlotte team that's also got off to a decent start to the season, 2-2-2. Two, two, and two under new head coach Dean Smith. Now, in terms of the all-time meeting, New England has pretty much dominated this meeting. Well, I say dominant, but Charlotte did get one win against New England, but other than that, New England has won three out of the four. Uh, and that including the last matchup where New England won 2-1 against Charlotte. In fact, the only matchup that Charlotte won against New England was the, the first ever meeting between both of these teams. And that's a memorable one too, because that actually will forever known as the first ever win that Charlotte FC have ever got in their MLS history. Uh, but besides that 3-1 win that they had, they lost uh, 1-0 to New England at home before New England winning 2-1 against Charlotte FC. Now, there's no doubt the Reps desperately need, need a win. And now that they're out uh, of CONCACAF Champions Cup, I mean, there's really no excuse for them to, to have to worry about. about uh, well, actually, they're not out, out of CONCACAF Champions Cup just yet, but let's be honest, they're pretty much out out of it. There's no way I could see, see them overcoming 4 nothing deficit against Copa America, but... There's no doubt that I think in, in, in this game they desperately need a win. In fact, Caleb Porter kind of made a bit of a bold prediction by saying that, yeah, he's going to guarantee the fact that New England was gonna is going to beat Charlotte. And, yeah, I don't think that's a good thing to, to say. And, and you know, I, I talk about my jinxes with teams, and I usually don't want to just say that I, I guarantee a team can win this game, uh, even if it's a, against a team that they have good history or, or, or against a team that's not doing well. In, in the league, and Charlotte is not a team that's not doing well in the league. They, they're doing pretty well uh, so far this season, and uh, unsurprisingly, Dean Smith basically fired back to say, yeah, you should probably choose those words wi wisely, because, you know, I, I feel like, yeah, you know, I know Caleb Porter, he, he's not shy away in term, terms of expressing his feeling toward the, the media, making some bold statement, and that's definitely a bit of a bold statement to say that they're going to guarantee that they're going to win against New England, because usually when a a head coach or anybody says that, it's usually going to end the other way where probably New England is not going to win win this game. And Charlotte will just say, thank you very much for making this bold statement because, yeah, the MLS gods definitely did not appreciate my making this bold prediction. And now you're basically going to have to pay and, and potentially lose another another game and and, and yet another, another game where New England is still searching for their first ever win. Now, moving on, we got NYCFC versus Atlanta United. So, for NYCFC, you know, it's been a rough start to this season, 1-1-4. One, one, and four. Uh, But they are playing at home in this game, which, you know, at least in the last game, they played pretty well uh, at home. I mean, they got their first win of, of the, the season at home. Uh, they're playing against Atlanta United, who has a free 0-2 record. Now, I think this game is not going to be at Yankees Stadium, because I think the the Yankees are play, playing this, this weekend. Uh, in fact, it's kind of their opening week. Uh, weekend series that they have. So I think this game is going to be at City Field because I don't think the Mets are actually playing playing at home. I might be wrong, though. I, I think it has to be at, at City Field. So if it's not at Yankee Stadium, it's probably going to be at, at City Field. So, yeah, you know, at least it's not really a truly a home, the, the, the real home for NYCFC, though. Again, you can argue that between Yankee Stadium and City Field and all these stadiums that NYCFC played, they're not going to get their true home until when we get to 
to 2026 when they finally build their soccer specific state now that being said they're facing against atlanta team that this is gonna be a good test for atlanta because as well as they play at home this season the road record hasn't been been great though you could argue that you know in terms of the two role games that they they have one was against the defending mls cup champion and then the other was them pretty much just short short-handed heading into the game so this could be a good test that the fact that they're going to have a healthy squad against a struggling nycfc side now in terms of all-time meeting five six and four in favor of nycfc and in terms of the last five head-to-head -head matchup, 2-2 two -two draw between both of these teams for a 1-1 one -one draw between both of these teams. Then NYCFC won 2-1 one against Atlanta for with a 2-2 two -two draw between both of these teams and NYCFC winning 2-0 against Atlanta United. So, yeah, let's see how this game is going to turn out. Let's see if NYCFC can get another big win to kickstart the season. Or will Atlanta finally get their, their first row win and, and really send a message to the rest of the league that, yeah, now we can win on the road and we're, we're ready to, to get back to where where we were a couple of years ago dominating the eastern conference now moving on we got vancouver versus toronto fc so this is one of those ga games that vancouver had said in the beginning of the year that they're going to play more afternoon games and again I, I like when when teams uh does that especially teams in, in the the west coast decide to have these early games that is kind of implemented in terms of uh, of the busy action because you know obviously i know apple tv want these games to kick off at 7 30 p.m eastern and mostly game kick off 7 30 but it didn't say anything about how how these west coast game can maybe kick off a little early and i think vancouver is taking advantage of that and uh, and in this game they got a pretty pretty tasty affair against toronto fc in an old canadian clash and maybe uh, another preview of the canadian in championship between both of these teams but in terms of the all-time meeting nine wins apiece and five draws apiece for both of these teams last time both of these teams Met each other. Vancouver won two one on the road against Toronto, and then Vancouver won three nothing against Toronto FC before it was a one nothing win that Vancouver has against Toronto. Then it was a two two draw between both of these teams, and then Vancouver win three two against Toronto FC. So yeah, Vancouver has definitely got Toronto number, and again, you know, for TFC, uh, the last game was definitely a bit of a reality check. The fact that you know, just a reminder, as good as the start of the season, John Herman ha has got this this team. They're still in a bit of a rebuilding year, and there's going to be those growing pains that where they're not going to have some great, great performance. And, you know, this is going to be a tough one facing against a White Caps team that, you know, I'm pretty sure Vanny Sartini will, will hope hope that this team just doesn't just simply decide to, to, to self destruct in the second half, as what we've seen in the la last couple of games. Because as much as the White Caps are winning games, yeah, these last two games hasn't been really uh, con con convincing of how they, of course, would play but we'll see whether or not if they can get a victory and especially uh they should not underestimate tfc especially with the way that i feel like this season maybe teams are under underestimating tfc and how good they are that yeah tfc have just basically take advantage of it the fact that yeah you know even though we're rebuilding we're still going to show up and anything can of course happen uh in mos as a result of that now moving on into the match that I'm pretty sure everybody is going to talk about, which is El Trafico. So what's kind of surprising about this game uh, is the fact that I'm surprised this game did not that does not get a, a lone uh, start time. I'm surprised that this game is part of the the huge huge um, mesh of, of games that we're going to have in match week number seven. But that being said, this game is going to be on national television. It is going to be on Fox. Which means that this game is going to kick off 25 minutes uh, before or after every one of those games. Well, actually, I wouldn't say 25 minutes. I would say 16 minutes because this game's probably going to kick off at 4.55 local time while the rest of the game kicks off at 4.39 uh, Pacific time. Uh, that being said, as I said, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific. But you know the real kickoff time is 7.55 p.m. Eastern, 4.55 p.m. Pacific. In terms of the last... Last or in terms of the head to head in El Trafico, uh, the Galaxy still leads the El Trafico series with a 9 5 and 7 record. By the way, uh, this is probably the first time in a while that the Galaxy actually have a better record than LAFC. Uh, and especially with, with the fact that this has been a while since the Galaxy uh, have been higher in the standings than LAFC. The Galaxy sitting at the top of the West with a 3 3 and 0 record, while LAFC have a 2 1 and 3 record. And in the last El Tra 5 El Trafico, well, you know, it seems like LAFC started to. To do, do better in the last five El Trafico. Uh, they won 4-2 uh, against the Galaxy. They did lose 2-1 in that El Trafico at the Rose Bowl to the Galaxy. But they did win 3-2 on the road against the Galaxy to get their first El Trafico win on the road before LAFC win 3-2 against the Galaxy. And then LAFC winning 3-2 against the Galaxy again. And as I said before, 
I expect there's going to be a lot of golf in this game. And with the way that both of these teams play very similar style, very fast-paced kind of game, yeah, expect there's going to be goals and expect the fact that tactics is going to be completely out of, out of hand. And that, again, if you would like to, to see a high, high intense and high high octane kind of game where you know defense is, is is optional this is going to be the game to 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 watch i would not be surprised if the final score is going to be like three two four three or even five five four because that's how el trafico works it just it, it's beautiful chaos at that time and that I, I will admit it it is started becoming one of the, the best rivalry and probably the most entertaining right rivalry to watch because as much as i i still admit that the cascadia derby is still the the, the granddaddy of them all in terms of, uh, of rivalry say and alongside with the hell is real derby it's nothing compared to, to the pure chaos that we see in this game between lafc and the galaxy like ever since the kickoff of this this rivalry almost every single game has been just absolute chaos and things that just does not make sense what whatsoever and i feel like this is going to be another one of those games uh, to kick off another chapter of El Trafico between these two LA teams. Now, moving on into the final game on this board and the first of five games that kicks off at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Pacific, is Austin and the San Jose Earthquakes. So I would say that this is probably the best opportunity for Austin to get a win against the Quakes, Consider it's hard to believe that the Quakes have never lost to Austin, even though Austin is now in to their fourth season uh, in, in the league. But in terms of Austin record, 1-3-2, and two, where as the Quakes is 1-0-5. Oh, and, and this is despite the fact that I've said Austin hasn't been playing very well this season. Uh, and I would say that this is kind of also kind of maybe, I wouldn't say a wooden spoon derby kind of match. Because, you know, both of these teams are not really in the in the wooden spoon uh, spot right now. New England is currently in, in that spot. In fact, Austin is actually uh, pretty high. Or not, I wouldn't say pretty high, but higher in the standing than what people... I think they are typically 12th in the Western Conference. Not great, but definitely better than what people think they are, considering how bad they've been to start the, the season. Now, in terms of the last five head-to-head -head matchup, as I said, the Quakes have never lost to Austin. 2-5-0 and oh is their record, though there's been a lot of draws in this meeting. Uh, the last four meeting has all ended in draw. It was a 1-1 draw last time on Decision Day, before it, it was a 3-3 draw between, or 2-2 draw between both of these teams. Then it was a 3-3 draw between both of these teams, then another 2-2 draw between both of these teams, and then the Quakes absolutely steamrolled Austin by winning 4-0 uh, as part of the last five head-to-head -head matchups. So, yeah, again, be interesting to see whether or not if Austin can finally get their first win against the Quakes. Now, normally I said that you know, sure, surely the Quakes can't 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 do it again, where they 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 get an early lead in this one and blow it. But I would not be surprised. I think that's going to be the tactics for Austin and for Josh Wolf team, where hey, they're probably just tell their guys that just concede a goal, like the first five minutes, you're going to win the game because that's how how it works for the Quakes this se season on the road, where every time they score the opening goal, I swear, if the Quakes score inside the first five minutes. I'm just gonna say they're gonna lose the game because I, I that's how that's the trend this year. I mean, three times this season they score inside the first five minutes, all three times they end up uh, losing the game. With that being said, I am now going to switch boards and look at the last six games to finish off this uh, crazy match week number seven, where we just for whatever reason we have just so many games that is gonna be at the happening at the same time, and also look at the last four games that's gonna start at 8:30 p.m. Eastern, 5:30 p.m. Pacific. So, moving on, we got Chicago versus the Houston Dynamo. So, Chicago, yeah, it's not been a great start to the season, to no one's surprise. 1-2-3, one, and three, whereas the Dynamo, despite not having their star number 10, Hector Herrera, they're still, still grinding resort and getting getting a record of 3-1-1 one, and one, and, and are, are near, near um, they're actually in, like, I think a four-way tie for, for second place right now with 10 points. Uh... All-time meeting, 13-8-8 eight, and eight in favor of the Dynamo. And in the last five head-to-head -head matchup, it was a 2-0 win that the Dynamo had against Chicago. Before Chicago did win 4-0 against the Dynamo. But then Chicago won 1-0 on the road against Houston. Before Houston returned the favor by winning on the road. But this time by a score of 3-2. And then the Dynamo winning 3-0 against the Chicago Fire. So, evenly balanced matchup. At least looking at the last five head-to-head -head -head matchup. And I would say that, you know, there's no doubt that Chicago desperately need need to get get things going i mean again it's been a very chicago fire as kind of start off of the the season where it's been a slow start well i will say that unlike previous season where it's a slow start because they can't score goals this team can't score goals but this team can defend that's the that's the 
the, the problem, and we'll see whether or not if they can do so against the Dynamo team. It's not known, known to, to score a, a lot of goals this season. It's been a team that's known to kind of grind out resort. Kind of playing your typical Ben Olsen kind of style of soccer. Just kind of grind out, out resort. Just not really the prettiest soccer to watch. But hey, if it's getting resort for the Dynamo, well, uh, I don't think Dynamo fans really care, care whatsoever. Now, moving on, we got Minnesota versus RSL. So this is a an interesting matchup because both of these teams are... are Near the top of the standings, Minnesota three one and one, whereas RSL is three one and two. And I know for sure that the Loons are going to be facing the same issue that they will have in the last game against the Union. They're going to be shorthanded again because I think Ray, for my hurt, Ray also is not going to be available in this game. He's still in Argentina dealing with the green car situation, and I think Tapia is still not available uh, in in this game as well uh whereas they face against an rsl team that again it feels like they, they they have rejuvenated themselves at least in the last couple of games itself now in terms of all time meeting five seven and three in favor of minnesota in terms of the last five head to head matchup it was a two two draw between both of these these teams or it was a one one draw between both of these teams then rsl won three nothing against minnesota before minnesota winning three two against rsl it was a one one draw between both of uh, these team and yeah it should be a very interesting kind of matchup again you know rsl has definitely been been on, on a bit fire in the last couple of games we'll see whether or not that that continue because you know they have had, had times where where this season they've been kind of gone for a bit of a roller coaster ride they've been ha having some highs and highs and then there's also been some lows and lows very similar to what we saw last year and again for minnesota it'll be very interesting to see how Ram ramsey will response after losing his first game again i said in the last game you know that was kind of a loss where in some way it's kind of good for for this team and i know that's crazy to say whenever a team lose you, you never want to say it's okay for that but i, I think it's a not only a learning experience but now it's going to be interesting to see how how they respond and i, I think this is an interesting test too because Again, once again, going to be shorthanded. Again, coming into this game, we'll see whether or not it, it, if these players can step up. I mean, even some young players on this team can, can step up and get get free points. If they can get free points in this game, then I, I think they're 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 heading in, in into the right direction, and, and and that this is not going to be like what we've seen before last year, where they just completely imploded after a good start to the season. Now, moving on, we got Nashville versus the Philadelphia Union. So, if you can't believe, the Union is actually playing their first Eastern Conference team this season. So, I mentioned uh, in the beginning of the year when I did the preview for, for, for the Union that it's kind of weird that they, they start the season with six games against a uh, Western Conference team. And one of those games, they, they still need to make up for uh, on April uh, 30th. But they finally get to play their first Eastern Conference foes with Nashville SC. And really, besides that Seattle game that they need to make up, Rest of the way, uh, the Union are only going to be playing against Eastern Conference teams because they pretty much play the maximum amount of Western Conference opponent that they that each of these teams can can face uh this season. But uh, in terms of the all time meeting, two three and one in favor of the Union, and the last five head to head matchup, it's been very tight. No no draw between both of these teams before two nothing road win that Union had against Nashville. Then it was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams, and then a 1-1 draw between both of these teams, and then the Union winning 1-0 against Nashville SC. I expect this should be a tight game uh, as well, because, again, it feels like any time when both of these teams meet each other, it's it's going to be, a, be a, a, a bit of a, a physical game, kind of a gr kind of match where there's... I wouldn't expect that you might see the prettiest soccer uh, in this game, and if you like to see some high-scoring affair, again, watch out, Trafco. Probably not this this game, but we'll see how this game, of course, would turn out, and we'll also see how you know if the Union does get another win in this one. Again, the the rest of the Eastern Conference are probably a little bit nervous now because it feels like the Union are are back in into good form, and really for Nashville, can they stop drawing games? Because you know between them and St. Louis, they have been the the draw kings in MOS, and that's at times can be very infuriating. Uh, speaking of St. Louis, they play against FC Dallas in this game, so there's a good chance they might not draw in this one because Dallas, you know, is just heading into an absolute free fall ever since the, the first game of the season. Uh, losing four in a row coming into this one against St. Louis with a 1-0-4 record while St. Louis, uh, they're tied tie with Nashville with the most draw. In fact, they have the, the exact identical record as Nashville with a 1-4-1 and one record. All-time meeting, one wins apiece for both of these teams in the last two head-to-head -head matchup. It was a 2-1 home win for Dallas before Dallas did win 2-0 against St. Louis. But mind you, this was the game 
when uh, the game was called off, I think, thing uh, in, in the beginning, and then there was a long layoff before this game resumed, and when the game resumed, uh, St. Louis gave up two goals, and they lost nothing to FC now. So, yeah, again, this is a game where St. Louis, good chance to face against a team that is definitely not playing well whatsoever uh, to get a win, because, again, you know, I, I know you know getting draw draws sometimes could be a good thing, but also, it could be a bad thing, too, because I've said before, getting draws might be good if you aren't are able to get a hard-fought resort, especially on the road. But it's not good when you're you're doing it at home, and it also doesn't really help you move up in the, the standing most time or not. Now, moving on into the last game of Saturday, and this is actually the only game that is not going to be part of 12 games that starts at the same time, is Seattle and Montreal. So, this, of course, is the final game game of the six game road trip for Montreal and I kind of celebrate that by wearing my CF Montreal jersey and I think again a pretty pretty long Quatois team is pretty relieved the fact that the the light is at the end of the tunnel now after this long road trip that they have and they still have a chance to maybe finish off this road trip strong because they're facing against a Seattle team that to say that they're struggling is an under understatement on the attack now, in terms of all-time meeting, uh, Montreal actually has a pretty good record against Seattle. In fact, it's kind of weird because usually Seattle has a pretty good record against everybody. Not Montreal, though. 6-1-2 and two that Montreal has over Seattle. And in terms of the last five head-to-head matchup, 2-1 win that Montreal has on the road against Seattle before another 2-1 win, this time at home against Seattle. Then a 1-0 road win against Seattle before it was a 2-2 draw between both of these teams. And then Seattle did win 1-0 against Montreal. So, knowing Montreal, seems like they have, have, have Seattle number, at least whenever they face against each other, they'll definitely be, be thinking that they can get uh, another win. But, again, you know, if they want to get another win, they definitely want to get off to, to a good start because, again, you know, this team must be very tired now that they, they have played so many road, road games to start start the season. I mean, the good news is, is that they're going to get a lot of home, home games in the middle uh, of the season. Uh, but yeah, they, they want to, to finally finish uh, the, the six-game road trip to start the season. And again, there's a good chance facing against a Seattle team that have only scored one goal this season uh, in open play. Yeah, one goal on open play. That, that's that been been pretty pit, pitiful for, for a Sounders team that I know they're missing some key pieces. But man, this is, is if you're a Sounders fan, it, it has to be, be be frustrated to see see a team just struggle this Adley uh, on the attack to start the, the season. Now, moving on in the final game, we got Sporting KC versus the Portland Timbers. So this is, of course, the lone Sunday game. And we're going to have this a lot as we go for the rest of the season, where there's usually only going to be one game that's going to be happening on Sunday. Uh, but this is an early game, too. It's a lunchtime kickoff, 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific. I believe this game is also going to be on, on Fox as well. So it's definitely not going to start at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. It's probably going to start at 1.55 p.m. Eastern, uh, 10.55 p.m. Lo- uh, uh, or Pacific time, 12.55 p.m. local time to be exact. Uh, Sporting KC is 2-3-1, while well, the Timbers is 2-1-3. and three. All-time meeting, 9 wins apiece, 8 draws apiece. Last 5 head-to-head matchup is a 4-1 home win against, against uh, uh, the Timbers before the Timbers did win 1-0 against Sporting KC. Then Sporting KC won 4-1 again against the Portland Timbers before, yeah, this was the... Uh, the, 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 this was just a game that Sporting KC fans does not want to remember. A 7-2 beatdown that the Timbers had against Sporting KC before it was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams. So, yeah, there's been some lopsided affair uh, between both of these teams, and especially the fact that, you know, if it wasn't for Dallas kind of gone through a bit of a free fall, Portland has kind of gone through a little bit of a free fall too. I mean, after a strong start to the season, three trade loss, and they definitely don't want to lose four in a row coming into this game against the Sporting KC side that seems like like they 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 have rejuvenated themselves after the victory that they had on the road against Toronto but we'll see whether or not if they can get get a win in this game against the Timbers side that you know they want to stop this this losing streak that they they've had uh in the in the past couple of games but there you have it that is pretty much it looking at all 14 of these games from match week Number seven, as always, let me know in the comments below what do you think of these games and make sure you leave your prediction below in the comments below of all 14 of these games. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button, and yeah, I of course will see you guys next time.